Come on, you roly poly funster, how about some rib ticklers? <laughs> Play up, Phil. Let's have some more of your cheeky comedy stylings. <laughs> Two fat blokes walking to a pub. It was me and my dad. We had a great night, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, then we went home. <laughs> went to an Italian restaurant yesterday, you know, I like eating. <laughs> well, duh. And uh, <laughs> I said to the waiter, do you do ciabatta, mate? And he went, yeah, give us a minute. <laughs> 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 Easy. <laughs> Behave yourselves. It's interesting, a lot of lovely ladies in the crowd tonight at the Comedy Store, and uh, welcome to you all. Hello, girls. And uh, I've been reading one of your magazines recently. Very interesting, it is too. Cosmopolitan. And it had one of those surveys in it that you uh, answer for the magazine. You know, the ones full of, uh, what is it? Lies! <laughs> What do you like about a man? Number one answer. What do you like about men? Number one. Number one answer. What? What? Yeah. Sense of humour. Yeah, it's right. Always say sense of humour. You'd drop them, wouldn't you, sister? For anyone that can make you laugh, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Look at her. Look. She's got that look. Yes. Assuming they don't look like Robbie Coltrane. Yeah. <laughs> Complete rubbish. It's like, you know, when you're 14 and you're looking for girlfriends and things like that, and you know, you're like, Mum, I want to go to a school dance. What do I do? I don't know what I do. I don't know what I do. Ask them for a dance. Right, right, OK. <laughs> right. And you know the way you have to concentrate really hard when you're 14? Right. <laughs> Ask them for a dance. And so that is right at the front of your head for the rest of your life. Ask them for a dance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ask them for a dance. Then you get to the school dance and you go out and you go, oh, all right, do you want to dance then or what? <laughs> and they go, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then it's, I don't know how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Action stations. <laughs> you just, uh, uh, <laughs> you don't know where to go next. Just, uh, it's like going up to them and saying, do you want to come welding for the next half hour? <laughs> what is the difference between you on and off stage? On stage, it's very liberating. Don't you find it quite a... It frees parts of yourself you tend to keep under control, I find, and so I say horrible. Yeah. I'm, I'm... You're liable to be more aggressive on stage, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think it's just... That's the, I, 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 I hate being analytical about it, but it's the control thing, isn't it? You've got to show you're the boss at a gig. These days, I think that's how it's changed, and the comedy's certainly more of a career option now. There's more people getting into it as a job. But it's not slicker as well. Yeah, it's bang, bang, bang. I, I like the knockabout, you know, the fact that someone could get on stage. Do you remember the Ice Man? A yeah. bloke would get on stage for 20 minutes and try and melt a bit of ice. Yeah. And just be chatting to the crowd. You know, things like that. I miss all that. Yeah. You know, I bumped real... into him at Tooting Lido's swimming pool in the summer. Uh, well, there's, that was a very successful gig if he melted that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love doing this gig. It's a mad gig. I came on stage tonight, you know, before I'd even got going. So I go, go on, big fella. I hadn't even started. I was going to do the gig anyway, mate. Thanks for the reminder, but... <laughs> that was a good one. I'll, I'll tell you a true story now. This happened in this very club, the Comedy Store. Comedy's unofficial national theatre, as it's known. This happened here on this stage about two months ago. I came out on the stage. Lovely, warm welcome. Great crowd, much like yourselves. Uh, yeah, yeah. Went out, picked up the microphone. But from the back of the room, I heard this, all right? Go on then, you fat! <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I arrive at work, do we have any accountants in? <laughs> Hello! So if you work in a large office, you sit down at work and, like, the manager, the supervisor, comes out, Morning, everybody. <laughs> Morning, Mr Perkins. <laughs> now, before you all start work today, I'd just like to say something. Do your jobs properly, you fucking slags! <laughs> I 
am sure that this man meant well, but it came out all wrong, didn't it? <laughs> it's not that I don't, w I don't want the situation where I walk out on stage and people are going, come on, you really pearly funster, how about some rib tifflers? <laughs> Let's have some more of your cheeky comedy stylings. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can we have a nice middle ground? Uh, that was all right. Oh, big fella! <laughs> Liza Minnelli never gets that, does he? You never get Liza Minnelli going on stage at Royal Albert Hall. She walks out to the microphone. She's just about to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow and then suddenly you hear, Sing it, Minnelli, you old slapper! <laughs> Dad now, you know, it's brilliant. I get to do dad things now. I never used to have to do dad things before. Like, you know, I, I've said the true story. Last month, when it was Safari Park for the first time, they're fantastic. Heartly recommend them, right? Go to the monkey enclosure. That's where the laughs are. They're fantastic. You drive in, there's a big sign that says, Do not stop! But if you don't stop, they don't climb on the car, so you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Round the corner, and brake on, wait for the monkeys to come. <laughs> At the bottom of the sign, it said, If you stop, uh, the monkeys will... We'll uh, remove things from your car. We'll take things off your car. Well, where did they learn that? <laughs> When's the last time you read in a wildlife magazine about rhinoceroses being found up on blocks in Africa because of a spate of monkey thefts? <laughs> Steve! Steve, it's the monkeys! They've got me legs again! <laughs> and me arms! Why do, why do, where did monkeys learn how to steal stuff off cars and why, for God's sake? I think it's part of an elaborate escape plan on the part of the monkeys. I think, you know, they're building a car. <laughs> One piece at a time. They have little monkey meetings. Like, All right, OK, now we've nearly finished the car. We just need another bit and then we're out. We're out of here, we're gone. <laughs> what we need is a standard Ford distributor cap for a two-litre engine. <laughs> Here's how we're going to do it. Right, uh, Gavin and Lucy, you get on the boot and start having full monkey sex and they'll be looking out behind you. Uh, Graham, pop the bonnet. <laughs> Doug, you go in, get the distributor cap, then we'll all piss off. Now, Alan, Alan. Al? Yeah. No more mirrors, please, mate. <laughs> Sorry? Good, we got enough. <coughs> well, now that you mention it, 111. <laughs> Look, the thing looks like a Vespa. It's supposed to be a Sierra hatchback. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, like, uh, so I pull up in the monkey enclosure on there, like, woo, in my car. <laughs> and suddenly they drop out of the trees, you know, run over the car. Up on the bonnet, you know, <laughs> And it's those big nutty monkeys. It's not like cheeky chimps. It's like, you know those multicolour ones, like with yellow eyes and really, really sharp teeth? Mandrills, I think they are. And they're insane. They're like psycho Adam and the Ants nutter. <laughs> they're not like tea bags. You couldn't sell tea bags with these boys. They I mean, sell condoms with them or something really edgy, you know. And they don't go, hoo, hoo, hoo. They, these, these ones do this. <laughs> that's mad. I've got three of them on my bonnet. I'm laughing my crabs off. It's fantastic. <laughs> These three nutty monkeys on my bonnet looking through the window going, Aah! My kids don't feel quite the same as me. That my, my kids are sat there like... <laughs> look exactly the same as the time I took them to go and see Seven, you know. Like. <laughs> look, the multiplex is showing that and Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Anyone can make a mistake, all right? <laughs> I loved it. I don't know what the fuss was all about. I mean, the problem is, I can't get an open presents when I buy them for them now. <laughs> Open it, darling. A... No, Daddy, no! Not a box! Not a box! No! Just open it. No, Daddy, no! Where's my me? Where's my me? Where's my me? <laughs> what about your monkey routine? I yeah. guess that you really did go to a, a monkey <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> Did you? I'm guessing you you really uh, yeah it was it was out after a safari park experience and they are funny come on they're the comedy animal I've always wanted to do that as an open spot down here if I find someone that could do the Planet of the Apes makeup I always wanted to do Bobby Galen Planet of the Apes stand up and come <laughs> on and just do a 10 minute routine and hey I'm not saying my mother-in-law's covered in fur 
<laughs> I say my mother-in-law likes bananas. You do Never do quite a good monkey. impression of uh, a monkey. It's not bad. I think the the one that I do that 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 shout is a pant hoot, <laughs> which is which is an excited chimp. That's the noise I do. It's an excited chimp. Anyway, so there I am. Three three monkeys on the bonnet. You know, one on the roof, one on the boot. I am. I'm just. They're just funny. I'm laughing away. It's fantastic. But the big one's obviously annoyed that I'm laughing at him. He's getting the right arse off. Until he sees my aerial. <laughs> He's like, ah, 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 And then he sees it and goes, £30 to get in, £40 worth of damage to the car. I'm £70 out on the day, still having the best day out of my life. <laughs> I'm laughing even more now. Nothing he does seems to annoy me. So what he does then is, that in order to sort of show disrespect for me, he starts having full penetrative sex with one of the other monkeys on the bonnet. Ah! 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 And me without a camcorder. <laughs> Hot monkey todder action on the body of my car. <laughs> Don't know if there's a market for monkey porn, but I could have cracked it. Then, he, uh, then he's, all, he's all through shaking this other monkey. He takes a windscreen wiper off and rams it up his ass. So he's got a windscreen wiper up his bum, a mirror in one hand, every in the other. Ah! 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 Then when he gets to the end, he gets to his little monkey vinegar strokes, pulls out, shoves her off the bonnet, ejaculates on the bonnet of my car. Ah! <laughs> then runs off back towards the trees, disdainfully. <laughs> Looking for all the world like a little mad furry branch of Halfords. Which is where I find myself the next morning. <laughs> 100 pounds worth of damage to the car, 30 pounds to get in, 130 pounds down on the day, and the best day out of my life, and there's spunk on my bonnet. You can't say that every day of life. <laughs> Going to Alfred's. All right, mate. Hello. Have you got an aerial for a 40 aero, please? Yeah, one of them. And uh, wing mirror, offside. Cayman Island yellow, brilliant, yeah. <laughs> And you got any cleaner? <laughs> you know, road grime, flies. <laughs> Monkey smunk. <laughs> Sorry? Road grime and flies. The last thing. Oh, that. Yeah. Uh, mon monkey smunk. <laughs> yeah, very funny, mate. Look, have you got anything that will get monkey semen off of a Ford Sierra? No, not turtle wank. Listen to me. I said <laughs> monkey semen. Oh, turtle wax. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what if you got one of them garages run by an old bloke? You know. What do you want? Horrible old bloke. You know I, mean? uh, I need some cleaner for my car, please, mate. Yeah. Sort of car. Fortiera. What colour? Blue. What's the matter with it? What's it got in it? You know, road grime, flies. A monkey's punk. <laughs> What sort of monkey? <laughs> now, Phil, how would you like your ideal showbiz death to be? I think, uh... Because I've not, I've, I've, I do a bit of telly. I'd like a sort of big break live TV show would be really good to go on and go, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to get that out and then woof, just go over after the good evening. <laughs> the irony of not it. Not get any material in break. No, not even get a gag in, nothing. <laughs> 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 I was reading a story in the papers the other day. True story, this, right? And it was about near-death experiences, madam. Now, being a comedian, I'm very interested in that subject. And <laughs> the important thing, right, what it said in this article, all these, it's like art attacks and, uh, you know, uh, drownings and people like that who've been brought back. People who've flatlined, you know, been gone for a minute. One guy had been there for three minutes and they brought him back, you know, with the old, you know, clear! Oh, I love them. I've got one of them at home. They're great. They? <laughs> well, I never know when I, I could go at any second. Look at the size of me, for Christ's sake. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, right, this near-death thing, I was reading in The Guardian, right, and, and, and it said all of them had the same experience. This was a really freaky thing. All of them said, you know, they were, they were asked, what could they remember from the moment they died? And they said, right, I remembered it was like being in a dark tunnel with a bright light that I was going closer and closer towards, and it was a friendly light. I wasn't afraid of it. I felt I should move towards it, and, you know. And then, but then I felt myself moving away, and that's when I woke up. And then, you know, all five people experienced this. And I thought, well, this has great theological implications. Maybe there is a heaven. You don't know. The book's still open on that. Then on the other hand, I thought, how do you know you're dead if you're like a tube driver? <laughs> what cartoon character do you identify with? Homer Simpson. It has to be. I'm, I'm a, you know... Just, there are times on stage when you say something stupid in your head, it is, DOW! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! After a good gig. Yeah, I do now. And talking of which, you do a bit of stuff about Americans on stage. Yeah. It's kind I, of obligatory almost, isn't it? Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's, no, I take a different tack on it. I think they've, they, I like Americans and I think they're great and I love it when they're over here and I find it very warm. It really annoys me when, you know, you get that. Any Americans in tonight? Mm. You know, Yo, over here. Wanga, 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 wanga. Mm. I hate the xenophobia directed against Americans. What I generally do, if I'm comparing a gig and that happens, I'll go on after the act and I'll say, uh, I'll say, uh, it's very ironic that so-and-so was picking on you there, sir, because if it wasn't for your granddad shagging his nanny, he wouldn't even be here during <laughs> the war, so. Have we got any Americans in, in, the, in the room this evening? I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right, mate. <laughs> How cool are the Americans? The Apollo 13. I saw Apollo 13, which was a risk because I'd not seen the other 12. I thought, go, go, you know, give it a go. You never know. <laughs> Imagine you're in space, you're four million miles from home. <laughs> your rocket, your ride blows up, you know, it's like. And then you get on the radio and go, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Fucking right, you have! <laughs> four million miles from home with no rocket. Oh, nice one. Fancy that myself. How calm do you have to be? How cool do you have to be? Houston, we have... Why aren't they on the radio going... Because <laughs> they're American and Americans can be cool like that. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have British astronauts. Apollo 13 with British astronauts. Very different story. <laughs> what was that? What was that? What was that bang? Barry! The ba What was that bang? <laughs> I've shat myself here. <laughs> It's a bloody good job I'm wearing a space suit, I'll tell you that for nothing. <laughs> the bang! It what? Oh, I do not want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Control, Mr. Control, it's uh, Apollo 13 here. Could you respond to that? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Control, Basil in here. What's the problem? How that? <laughs> I'll tell you what the problem is, mate. The rocket's broken! The rocket's broken! The rocket's broken! The rocket's broken! <laughs> Try to remain calm. <laughs> calm! Fuck you! <laughs> the rocket's broken! It's Apollo 13, this is Mission Control here. We are trained for just this eventuality. Uh, we will throw into effect now the machinery necessary to rescue you from up there. But time is of the essence. Every single second... Sorry, love? Yeah, two sugars, please. <laughs> Have you got any of that biscuits? No, the little ones. Chocolate bits. Yeah. And a sandwich. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every second counts. <laughs> On a related topic, right? I'm listening to the radio the other day. I'm listening to Classic FM, cracking station. Got Henry. Henry Kelly's on Classic FM. Hey. Oh, he's a kicking DJ. <laughs> oh, what a lovely piece of music that was. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Lilting, melodic, it had notes in it and everything. I loved it. <laughs> and if I could find the cover, I'd be after telling you who it was by. <laughs> ah, there it is, over there. Now, that was Beethoven, and that was his Ninth Symphony. <laughs> Nine of them! And he was deaf, you know, a remarkable man. Anyway, now, <laughs> after the break, we're going to have some Batch and some Mozart. <laughs> Possibly a little brutch before the end of the show. We'll see how we're going. But first this, do you suffer embarrassing itching? 
anyway, I'm listening to the Vivaldi hour, and it's like. I was thinking to myself, they've remixed this one, and no mistake. <laughs> wow. A minicab company from South East London, all the way, 60 miles to my house in Essex, the signal. I couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, minicabs don't go that far. Most minicab companies I know could operate on the old bean tin string principle. <laughs> Pull it tighter, 4 2, you're breaking up. <laughs> 60 miles, radio from the Latin, madam. Radii, the verb, I can't decline it at the moment. I'll think about it a little bit later. <laughs> it means going in all directions, radio, from a central point. Radio goes north, south, east, west. It also goes up. So at some point this could happen. Mission control, mission control, this is astronaut Jackson here. We're shortly going to be uh, entering a geostationary orbit alongside the Hubble Space Telescope. Do you have any final technical data before we commence the repair operation? Over. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, it's a pickup in barking. Over. <laughs> Mission control, mission control. This is uh, this is astronaut Jackson again here. Mission control. Uh, could um, could you uh, possibly clarify that last order, please? Mission control. We seem to be a little confused here. Over. <laughs> uh, stop fucking me about, Bob. <laughs> Listen. I've got two Billy Bunters embarking who want to go to Lakeside. <laughs> now get that heap of shit you call a Sierra down there and pick them up. 224 Ripple Road, it's the top bell. <laughs> uh, you've been an absolutely wonderful crowd. It's been a great time. I'll uh, see you again sometime. Good night. Next Sunday at 10, it's the classic Eddie Murphy hit comedy, 48 Hours. But right now, want another piece of Phil? Well, it seems Phil Jupitus is scared of all things that come in fours. In Quadrophobia, next. Oh! <laughs> 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 Woohoo!